The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terrabina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terrabina, blog of the Dragons Insider, blog of Inside the OAA, and the host of um, three, the last three um, brain cells and also the host of Between Terraminas on Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on YouTube. My co-host Ian Locke this week did not um, have some car trouble this week, so I'm riding solo this week. So we got a lot to look at. Obviously, recapping the um, Week 8 games and, of course, talking Week 9 matchups, um, doing my projections. I do want to send out my congratulations to... Um, Troy and um, Groves for winning state titles this week in boys tennis. Um, a lot of them, um, you know, the first two state titles in the OAA. Um, so I want to send out my congratulations to both um, those two teams um, for a job well done. Um, so, you know, so that'll be really interesting going forward. Um, obviously, we got to talk football. Um, volleyball, we're getting real close to the end of the year. Um, I got my districts, um, district matches up on my blog at semi-semicolon-termina-blogspot.com. If you want to take a look at the matchups, obviously, um, those are some really interesting matchups to look at. Um, we're going to recap um, week number eight. Um, going to start off with the blue. And I think, you know, when you look at the blue, um, you know, this could be the um, t- the um, league that gets the most playoff teams in this season. I, I mean, before this morning, I looked at um, Snooze to use um, playoff map, um, and um, it said that, um, you know, when I looked at Snooze to use's playoff map, um, I basically um, looked at, and I said, and, and it looked at the most of the blue was in the playoffs. You know, um, you got Bloomby Hills, Troy, Troy Athens, um, in Avondale, right, Berkeley and Avondale, um, those are the those are the five teams right now that would be in the playoffs. Of course, Avondale will be in Division Three. Um, got a big one with At- Troy Athens this week. If they can win that one, um, I think that will solidify their um, their um, postseason hopes. Um, even though I thought their postseason hopes took a hit yes last week in their loss to Farmington, um, and then you look at obviously. Um, you know, Troy Athens picking up that week eight game um, with Detroit Renaissance, um, winning that in convincing fashion. Now, that game, I think, virtually becomes an elimination game this week between those two teams. Um, and then, of course, you, we got the big one with Troy and um, Blue Field Hills. Um, that, we're going to talk more in depth that game because that, that's a monster game for the Blue title and also um, some postseason implications are on the line in that game. So... Um, looking at the blue, um, obviously Blue Bay Hills had no problem with Royal Oak winning 38-7. to um, C.J. Jackson was a difference maker there. Um, Drew Saposki had two interception returns for touchdowns. Um, you know, Royal Oak just really was outmatched in that game. Just, you know, I, I mean, like, and with Royal Oak, I mean, they've lost, um, they've lost three straight. They just haven't been the same team since, um, they've really struggled, um, finding an identity, um, you know, I was, you know, it, and it was expected, you know, with Royal Oak. I, I thought that was, a, an, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, the problem with them, obviously, is their mindset. You know, they got to address that this off season. I mean, what team do they want to be? What team are they going to want to be? That's the big question I have with Royal Oak this off season. Um, For Bloomfield Hills, um, obviously, a lot of people have asked me about this team. And, you know, why did I rank them low? Why did I rank them, you know? You know, why, I mean, like, the, the reason why I say this with Bloomby Hills is why I ranked them low is because, you know, when you look at the Kansas Jayhawks back in Johnson, they really got up number two, really haven't played anybody, really anybody special. I mean, they knocked off Berkeley. That's their best win right now is the Berkeley Bears. I mean, people look at, obviously, um, the Troy Athens win, I but I really think the Berkeley win's their best win right now. Um, this week... That changes. Um, that'll be a good test for them. Um, and then you look at, on Troy's case, obviously, they came off a huge win, 10-7 against Berkeley, where they needed a goal line stand. Um, and um, they needed a goal line stand, and they needed a... Um, a um, and they needed a um, field goal, 34-yard field goal 
to win that game. And I really think that, um, you know, it, um, that was a huge win for Troy. Um, I thought, you know, that was a, it was a really good, great, great game to watch. I mean, like a lot of mood swings, a lot of emotional swings. I mean, like, you know, Berkeley was fighting for a league title at the time. Um, and for Troy, you know, to go into Hurley and win that game, that tells you that this is a different Colts team. Now, people are going to say, well, okay, um, how is Troy going to, res- Blue Bay Hills are going to respond, especially in the next week, because you know the both are going to be in the postseason. And you really look at that matchup. Um, a lot to talk about in that matchup, though. We'll get to that later on in the show. Um, we'll do my projections um later on in the show, but that is a big one to keep a real close eye on. Um, we talked Troy Athens and a- and um, Avondale. That is another big match to keep a real close eye on. Um, Ferndale Pontiac, I really want to talk that match. And to recap that one, that was a really interesting game. I mean, it was that was 14-6 to six in favor of, um, of Ferndale over Pontiac. Of course, both teams are very young. Both teams are... Um, I mean, both teams are very, very young. And for Pontiac to put to play, I thought Pontiac's defense played really well in that game. I mean, I'm going to give Coach um, Ken Wade um, a ton of credit here, and I really am. Because when you look at that matchup and you look at Pontiac getting crushed every week, it's, it gets, it's, it's sad. I, I get really, really sad. You know, seeing that happen. Um, but for them to be very competitive in that game against Ferndale, um, it just told me that, you know what, this team can compete at a high level. And I think at the end of the day, they did. I mean, you know, but it just wasn't enough against Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale, we know they've had a lot of, they've taken a lot of hits this year, obviously, with their, um, with their, um, you know, with, with their with some losses, obviously, but with Ferndale, I just think that you know their year is next year, and I really think that for Coach Eric Royal and his team, I really think that you know you only lose four seniors, um, but I really think their year is next year. And in Pontiac's case, you know, for them, you know, you just got the new field, you just got the new stadium. I mean, you know, you just, I mean, like you just, you're starting to um, reap the benefits, and I think if you're Pontiac, obviously. This is a team that I really think could go is going to go in the right direction. And I really think Ferndale, you know, I really think Pontiac is going to be a team to watch for. Maybe not in a year or two, but maybe in a, but maybe the next few years because I think they're starting to get a quarterback in there. They're starting to develop talent there. Um, they're learning to be competitive, and I really think at the end of the day. That's what you really have to have with Pontiac. You've got to be competitive. That's the first step, you know, to putting together a really good football team. It's a very slow process that they're going through right now. Um, but I just think at the end of the day, they're going to be fine. I really think that they, as long as Wade is there long term, I think Pontiac is going to be fine. Um, so that's my thoughts on Pontiac. Um, Farmington, obviously, this is a team where... Um, you know, they are starting to pick things up um, at the right time. I mean, they've won three straight. Jacob Sanders has played really good football. Dominic Peschel's starting to play really good football. Um, I would really, for them, I think the downfall for them was the end of the, um, was early in the year when they lost some really, really rough games. I mean, they lost to Bloomfield Hills. They lost to them. They lost to Troy Athens. They lost to Troy. They lost to Bloomfield Hills. You know, those are some really tough losses right there. And then the big win for them was Avondale, obviously. That's a big one for them at Dick By Field. Um, just going in there and winning that game. But I just really think that um that early stretch in the year where they've had some really difficult games just really just really got a um a hold of them this season. So for Farmington, um I know they said three and five. It's pretty much a long shot for them to get in the postseason. Um, they got Ferndale this week. Um, they'll probably they'll finish likely four and five, but um, at a high note, I mean like, but 
you know, when you look at Farmington, there is going to be some questions for them going forward. And I really think that for Farmington, this is a team that I, I think could, um, could make some noise. I mean, they could make some noise going forward there. Um, Royal Oak, I mentioned earlier, of course, they've had some struggles. They got Frazier looming this week, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I do want to look at, obviously, um, I, we talked Troy, Troy, Athens, Boopy Hills, Avondale, Ferndale, um, Pontiac, obviously. I mean, like, um, but when you look at the blue right now, I mean, like, and I've looked at Snooze's map, and we talked earlier about this, is there are some teams, I mean, like, this, to me, the blue... It's a really interesting position for the blue because, you know, obviously with Blue Bay Hills and Troy, um, you have Berkeley, you have Troy Athens, and Avondale right now are playoff teams in that division. Now you got to wonder, I'm not worried about them this week as much as I'm worried about them next week when the playoff brackets come out. If, let's say, if News' map is accurate and Blue Bay Hills has to play Novi Detroit Catholic Central and Troy has to play Sterling Heights Stevenson. Those are two very bad matchups. I mean, yes, they're going to be at home, but you look at obviously, if you look at in Troy's case, let's say playing Sterling Heights Stevenson, you know, you're playing against a team that's one of the best in the Mac Red, and you're going to, it's going to be really difficult for you. You know, I don't know if you have the personnel to match up with them. You know, Stevenson's got a very good quarterback. And then you got a, um, and then, um, so if you're Troy, that's a difficult matchup for you. If you're Bloomfield Hills and you're looking at Novi Detroit Catholic Central, I've talked about this in my blog article about Bloomfield Hills. And I think that's a big problem because when you look at this matchup, when you look at this game and you look at Novi Detroit Catholic Central, it is a really, really difficult game. It's a difficult matchup. It's a tough matchup. And you know, I don't know how Bloomfield Hills would do against Novi Detroit Catholic Central. I, I just don't know. And if they really and if they um <laughs> if they were, let's say, to beat Troy, but if you were to beat Novi Detroit Catholic Central in the first round, let's say if that happened, then you've definitely earned my respect. But Right now, <laughs> there's still some question marks regarding Bloomby Hills. There still is. And yes, you know, you're 8-0 for a reason. You're 8-0 right now. But these next two weeks are going to tell what Bloomby Hills is. Because if they were to get no by Detroit Catholic Central in the first round, if they were to get, you know, they could, it's possible Bloomby Hills and Troy could play twice. You know what I mean? I mean, it, that is a possibility. So, but if they were to play, um, but if Troy, and, but if Troy, but if Booby Hills were to play, um, Novi Detroit Catholic Central, it's not a good matchup for them. It really is. It really isn't. And I want the people at PK Sports, I want the Booby Hill student section to understand that. This is a really difficult matchup for Booby Hills if they were to get Novi Detroit Catholic Central. And if they were in that district, you know, you got West Bluefield in there too. So it's a really tough sled for Bluefield Hills if Snooze to use map is accurate. And for Troy, it's the same thing. It's a really tough situation for them. Like, you got to, if Snooze's map was accurate, then you got to deal with likely with Adams. You got to deal with Troy. I mean, you got Troy Athens and Adams. That would be a really unique matchup. I still think Adams would win that matchup. And then you have Stevenson and um, Troy. So, you know, that's a really difficult scenario for Troy if that matchup were to happen. Um, on Berkeley, they, they would take on UD Jesuit, according to Snooze's map. Um, I think that's a tough matchup, to say the least, um, if that was to happen. Um, and then on the other, and then, so for Berkeley, but I do think Berkeley can match up well with the Cubs. I, I think they do have a shot in that one. But then you're looking at a very tough matchup on the other side. You got Livonia, you got um Livonia Churchill. Um, you know, and that's a difficult matchup there for Berkeley. So I'm curious to see what Berkeley does. They show no problem with Pontiac this week, but then 
Yeah, playoff match likely possibly UD Jesuit. Um, UD Jesuit's played a really tough schedule. Um, but it, I'm curious to see what happens there if those two teams were to play. Um, Avondale is a really interesting one, obviously, being in Division Three. Um, you know, they're three and five right now. I don't think D three is as good as people think it is. Um and also this is where Harper Woods is at as well. Um so we'll talk Harper Woods' situation in a minute. Um but for Avondale, this is a really tough matchup if they were to get into the postseason. Um because if Avondale were to get in, and that's a big if with Troy Athens right now. I think that Avondale has to beat Athens just to get into the playoffs. If they do, then I think then that first round match of Birmingham Brother Rice, it's a tough matchup. Likely going down to Southfield at Lawrence Tech. Um but that's that's a huge if right now. So if Avondale were to win that game and you know, so I, I really think that would really it would be an interesting match for sure, but I think it's a difficult matchup. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Harper Woods, obviously, coming off a really tough loss to Warren D. Sal. Um, Christian Stokes with two touchdowns. Um, Vinny Booth had a touchdown, had a nice game for Harper Woods in their loss. Um, now you look at their district, obviously, they sh- it's a tough game with E-Course Lumen. Um, but I just think that... Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there in that match. We'll talk about the uh, projections in a couple minutes. Um, but for Harper Woods, I mean, looking at their district, it snooze his map is accurate. Then you got to look at the possibility of playing um, River Rouge in the first round and then possibly Detroit Martin Luther King in the district final. That's difficult. That is a really difficult role for Harper Woods because of the fact that you're playing two quality opponents. You know, and that district is absolutely brutal when you look at, obviously, Detroit Martin Luther King, Harper Woods, and then River Rouge. I mean, that is really difficult. And the last one in that district, according to Snooze, is Melvindale. I mean, I don't know. I feel bad for Melvindale if that were the map. But Harper Woods, um, really tough scenario for them right now. Um, If that... If, that, if those matchups hold well. And it's a difficult, difficult matchup, to say the least there. So those are my thoughts on the blue. And on um, Harper Woods, obviously, um, those are... I mean, the blue's got some really difficult matchups, to say the least, in the postseason. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, let's go from the blue to the white. And, you know, when you look at the white, obviously, this week, Adams had no problem with Stony Creek, 40-20. Um, Groves got shellacked by Clarkson. Seaholm got shellacked by Lake Orion. Um, I mean, Rochester won, got shellacked by Oxford. Um, and then you look at, um, North Farmington losing to West Bloomfield. And then Oak Park winning at Southfield Arts and Tech, 42-28. That's a huge story in its own right. Um, but when you look at Adams, obviously Adams looks to me like this is the team that could possibly be a Division One state title contender. They they could seriously be one, especially with the offense they run. Um, you got a very good problem at quarterback with Parker Pico and Nick Patera. Um, you got a running back in Griffin Hankey. Um, you got a very good receiving core. Um, you know your your defensive line. Your lines are really good. I mean, like Adams has got the complete package. And you look at this team. I think they have a good shot to go far if um, things go right. I mean, when you look at, of course, a lot of teams, it is really hard to prepare against Severe. It is really, really difficult to go against a team that runs that type of offense. And with Adams, the Veer, you know what I mean? It, it, it's a difficult offense. And I've said this on air many times. You know, it... It can be as you can be as good as um you can be it but it can be good, but you know that veer is really, really frustrating, you know what I mean, to watch. I mean, it is a really difficult offense to contain and control. It's really difficult. Um 
And then I do want to look at Rochester. I mean, they're coming off a really tough loss to Oxford, 33-14. Um, now they sit at 5-3. Five and, um, five and three. They are on the outside looking in right now in the postseason. I mean, right now they sit at 35. The MHA will take the top 32 teams based on your strength of schedule. And Rochester's strength of schedule is a little concerning right now. Um, so when you look at this game, Lumen and Arbor here on, there are some playoff points involved here. I mean, don't be surprised, let's say, if Rochester were to win that game. To um, basically, if Rochester were to win that game, I think they're in the playoffs. Because, because they would be 6-2. and two. Uh, Actually, they would finish the year at... Um, I think, yeah, there's five and three. I think they'll be six and three. Um, you know, that big win against Amber here. And Amber here has had a really good year. Um, their only loss has been to Celine. Um, Celine, we know, is a very good team. Um, and, um, you know, Ann Arbor here on right now is coming in at seven and one. Um, so for Rochester, this is a big game for them. If they can knock off, you know, to go up against Ann Arbor here on. Having a really good year. Um, they've won. They've won seven games. That is the most they have won since 2011. They're 10 and three in their last um last 13 games. I mean, like they've. I mean, like they they've only won seven games since 2011, and I think that says a lot to where the River Rats have been, obviously. So, Ann Arbor Hurons rolling right now. Um, I think that's a key matchup, obviously, for um, for Rochester. Um, obviously, um, that is a huge, huge matchup looming for Rochester. Great opportunity for Coach Eric Vernon to have um, looming. Um, and then we look at, obviously, the um, North Farmington situation. Just, I just feel so bad for the Raiders this year. I mean, in fact, you were 3-0, and up 17 out in Oak Park. And they just haven't been the same team since that game. I mean, they've lost five straight, um, including last week. And all those games, they had the lead. I mean, at some point. I mean, in those five losses they had, I mean, they had the lead at some point in each of those losses. And they just couldn't finish. That's got to make Coach John Herstein nuts. I mean, you know, the fact that this team has not been able to finish, you know, and not been the same team since that um, – since that Oak Park game, I mean, they knocked off, I mean, Farmington, Lake Orion, and um, Groves, and they were putting up good numbers against them. They were putting up good numbers. And now they've struggled. I mean, <clears throat> haven't been able to close the deal out, haven't been able to. Um, and, and that's really unfortunate. I mean, obviously, that's something that you have to look at. Um, just unfortunate with how things are. I mean, obviously, that's the thing. So, we'll see where we're at. We'll see where they're at. Um, I think when you look at, um, Groves and Seaholm's cases, both Birmingham schools has been really, really rough for both of them. Groves, you know, I was, a lot of people, you know, thought three and six would be a positive likelihood for Groves this year. Um, with the schedule, um, didn't think it'd be this rough for them, though. Really didn't. And then Seaholm, obviously, just didn't look, you know, they struggled this year. Young group, very, very young group. I mean, it just makes you wonder. I mean, so we'll see what happens going forward for those two teams. Um, Oak Park coming off a big win against Southie Day and T, 42-28, um, I'll talk A&T's defense in a minute. Um, they've got a huge defensive problem there. Oak Park, you know, I don't know if it's too late for them. I mean, they sit at, um, I think they're 3-5 and five right now. Um, got Clarkson looming. Um, so when you really look at Oak Park, you know, this is going to be a really interesting week for them. If they can knock off Clarkson, that is a huge, huge, huge um, playoff scenario for them. I mean... But if they can, um, but if they lose that one, um, you know, it's, you know, you can, it's going to be really difficult for them. So 
when I look at Snoo Steve's map, according to the white, um, for North Farmington, it's simple. You have to win and get some help. And you're playing a 7-1 and one Traverse City Central team who's won seven straight. Um, only loss was to DeWitt earlier in the year at Ann Arbor. Um, last year, you these two staffs know each other, went against each other in the regional um, finals last year at, um, tra- at Derby Field in Traverse City. Um, just really... Then you have Josh Burnham at quarterback, and he can be a nightmare. I talked to John Herstein during media day, and, you know, he he looked, he looked, I mean, he was nervous playing him, playing against him. I mean, obviously, we know Burnham's a heck of an athlete, heck of a player, um, but he can do some things, you know what I mean? He did some things in that game last year out at Derby Field, Um so if you're North Farmington, you know, this is a really, really, really difficult spot you're in right now. So, but if you win this game, you're going to win. I If you win this game, then I think it's going to help you significantly in the playoffs. And I really do. So when you look at the um, playoff map, obviously, you know, North Farmington, you don't see there. You don't see a Groves or a Seahome or a um, Oak Park in there. I mean, the Adams is probably the only team you see right now that is in that map. In Rochester, right now ranked 35th, um, they have an opportunity if they can knock off um, Ann Arbor Huron to get into the postseason. I mean, they have a really good situation. I mean, they have a really good opportunity to do that. And I think if you're Rochester... um, it's a golden opportunity for them. And I think it will be a really, really good golden opportunity for them to um, make some noise and make some impacts. Obviously, that's going to be the matchup to keep a very close eye on. Um, let's go from the white to the red. And, you know, we're going to look at, obviously, um, you know, you got you got um, the red really had a nice week. Um, the only exception, Stony Creek losing to... Um, Stony Creek losing to um, Adams and then South and Arson Tech losing to um, Oak Park. So when you look at the red this week, I mean, pretty good week for the red. I mean, obviously, um, you know, you got Clarkson's blowout win against Groves, Lake Orient's blowout win against Seaholm. Um, and then you have, um, and then you have obviously um, Oxford's big win against Rochester to keep their um, playoff hopes alive. Um, when you look at Clarkston, Clarkston's playoff road is secure, I think. I think they're secure. Um, looking at, obviously, the possibility for them to have to go to Grand Blank, um, to see Grand Blank, uh, Davison, Lapeer. Lapeer, Davison's basically an elimination game this week. I mean, Davison, according to Snooze News map, was not in the playoffs. So when you look at Lapeer and Davison, that is a big matchup there. Because I think whoever wins that game is in the playoffs, and whoever loses that game is done. So that's how I'm looking at it from a Northern Michigan perspective. Now, what impact does it have at Clarkson? Right now, they would have Clarkson the number two seed behind Grand Blank. And this one's interesting to me because <laughs> Grand Blank has had a really nice year. They've had a really nice year. They're undefeated right now. They play in one of the most, um, you know, but when I look at the Valley, you know, I don't think it's as strong as people give a credit for. I mean, obviously, the best three teams right now in the Valley are in D1 in the South. You got Grand Blank, Davison, Lapeer. I know up north, you got Midland, Midland Dow. Um, Bay City Western's had a really nice year. Mount Pleasant's had a really nice year. But do they help you play out point-wise? That's the big question I have for for Grand Blank, Davis and Lapeer. Do they help you? Do do does the Valley help you? That's the big question I have. I mean, Flint Powers is leaving the league for football. I mean, that was a big storyline, you know, up north in mid Michigan. Because the fact that the Valley really has obviously um when you look at the Valley, it's not as um it's not as, you know, when you look at being a Traverse City Central, Traverse City West, I mean, like, you know, are they going to help you? That's the big question. 
are those teams going to help you? Maybe Trevor City West could, but I don't know if the Valley will help you from a playoff points perspective if you're Clark, if you're Davison, Lapeer, and Grand Blank. That's the big question I have. Um, obviously, when you look at when you look at um, Clarkson's stance, obviously, possibility playing Grand Blank is really real. The fact that they would have to go to Grand Blank is really real. Um, to go to the Frank, um, that is really real right now. And for Grand Blank, for um, and I would be a, and I know Clarkson should be motivated for that game if that were to happen, because it was Grand Blank that knocked Clarkson out of the playoffs last year. Um, I think it's to be if it, if if that were to happen, Clarkson Grand Blank, I think it'd be a good game, it'd be a really good game. Um. I know from a depth standpoint, it favor Grand Blank. But Clarkston, to me, I think is on a mission. I really do. And if Clarkston were to meet Grand Blank in the first round, in the, um, in the postseason, I think it would be a really interesting game. On Oxford's case, you know, you're sitting at 4-4. Four and four. You know, you've just won a big game with Rochester. Now you get Chippewa Valley. It's a big game for you. You know, you win that game, you're in the playoffs. If you lose that game, you got to do some praying. That's really the bottom line for Coach Jack Lyon and this team. That's the bottom line. You win, you win, you're in. You lose, you're praying. That's how I'm looking at it from Oxford's case. Chippewa Valley's got a really good quarterback, really good playmakers. Um, but the bottom line is here for me is for Oxford's case, and I've said this twice now, um, you know, when you're in, you lose your print. That's how I view Oxford. Um, Lake Orient's case, um, they came off a good win against Seaholm, 35-6. Um, there is an opportunity that awaits them, but they're going to need some help, and I think there's the reason why. Um, they sit 42nd right now. Um, now what helps is they got Celine this week. Um, Celine right now is ranked third, coming undefeated. Um, it's a really difficult matchup for them going down into Washtenaw County. Um, but when you look at Lake Orion, if they can win that game down there in Saline, and then they get some help, I think they could sneak in the playoffs, but they got to get a lot of help to do that. I mean, the two losses to North Farmington and Southfield Arts and Tech early in the year have been, have really hurt this team. And that's the bottom line right now. Those are the two games that are killing Lake Oregon right now. Are the losses to North Farmington and the losses to um and the losses to Southfield Arts and Tech. I mean, those are the two losses. But for Lake Oregon, if they can win that game against Celine, that is huge playoff points. That is absolutely huge playoff points. If they cannot get if they can't win that game, you know, then you know, then there's going to be some questions. I mean, there's going to be some questions. You know, what if? You know, what if they were to beat? What did they? What did they beat North Farmington? What did they beat South Arts and Tech? You know, are we in this? Are we talking this conversation right now? So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in that one. Um, South Arts and Tech. What happened to their defense? I mean, their defense is giving up 40 points in four straight games. That's that's rough. That is really rough. I mean, it's difficult, you know what I mean? And now you're in a really tough pickle. Um, now you got to go down the River Rouge, play the play um, play the Panthers. Rouge has basically had Southfield Arts and Tech's number. Um, for Southfield to get in the postseason, they got to win this game and then get a ton of help. They sit at 35 right now. Lake Orion right now is at 39. So, they need some help right now. So, we'll see what happens there. I mean, with Southfield Arts and Tech. Stony Creek, same thing. I mean, even though I think, even though they got 49 right now, um, they got 49. And I think with the Cougars, um, obviously, this is a team where, um, you know, this is a team that they're coming off a tough loss to Adams. Um, they're at 49. Um, they do have a shot, you know what I mean? 
they like I said, Stony Creek, they gotta get some help. They gotta win against Sea Home and then get some help. And I think, you know, um if they, for them to be in the postseason. I mean, so when you look at Stony Creek's road, it is a really, really tough road, I mean, for them. Um, but not as tough as what Lake Orion and Southfield has to go through. Um, so we'll see what happens with Stony Creek. Um, so we already talked the, uh, and then West Bloomfield, obviously with them, they came off a good win against North Farmington. Um, the Raiders win is a good win for them, despite trailing 16, 15 in that game. So for them, you know, they're looking pretty good, but I still think they need to, um, they need to tune up some things. They need to tune up some things. They got a number one seed right now, according to Snooze TV's map. Um, but I still think at the end of the day, they're missing that one piece. And I think, you know, they got to figure it out real quick if they want to defend their state championship. And, you know, they got a good shot to do it. I mean, like, but there's some questions there for West Bluefield. There is a ton of questions. So we'll see what happens there going along shortly. Okay, now we're going to go from... Um, we're going to preview um, the Week 9 games upcoming up this week. Um, you know, we got a lot to look at this week. Obviously, um, some real interesting games um, on the docket. Um, let's look at our first game. This is Harper Woods going to E-Course. Um, E-Course sits at 6-2. and two. Harper Woods right now. Um, Harper Woods sits, I believe, at 6-2 um, at and two as well. Um the loss to Warren D. LaSalle, you know, is it was a that game was close in the score indicated last week. And you look at obviously you got Christian Stokes, Mini Boost. Um, you know, so when you look at the Pioneers, um <laughs> there's a lot riding high on them for them. This is their um last regular season game as an independent for going the OA. Um taking on E course team, it's really been better. I mean, like, this team's been playing some good football. I mean, they came off a nice win against Flint, um, Hamity last week. People are going to say, you know, they haven't really played the schedule that Harper Woods has. Um, so when I look at this matchup here on paper, everything points to Harper Woods. Everything points to them. But, you know, um, every, I mean, like, and I think I'm going to lean that way too this week with them against them. Um, Against E Course, I think Harper Woods goes into E Course and um, wins behind the um, running back play of Christian Stokes. Vinny Booth will have a huge game. Um, Jacob Olden will have another good game as well. Um, those are some guys that are more than capable of having big time performances. And I really think Harper Woods um, is going to do really, really well in this game. Um, I think they're going to win that game, um, get ready for the playoffs. Um, you know, and beat a really good E course team that's going to test them. I think it's going to be close than the, close than the score indicates, but I really think E course is going to be the team that um, I really think Harper Woods will be a team that's rolling heading into the um D three playoffs. Um, let's look at um Berkeley and Pontiac. Um, this it'll be at the new field at Pontiac High School. Um, obviously, when you look at this matchup. Um, it's a tough matchup to say the least, um, for Pontiac, you know, taking on a Berkeley team that's coming off a really tough 10-7 loss to um, Troy last week. Um, I think Berkeley's going to take their anger out on Pontiac. Um, and, um, I, I just don't think this is going to be really close. Um, so I, I really think Berkeley's going to win this game pretty convincingly over Pontiac. Um, Royal Oak and Frazier. I mean, this is a really interesting game. Last year, it was 34-24 in favor of the Ramblers over the Ravens. Now Royal Oak has to travel to Macomb County to take on a, good, a very good Frazier team. Royal Oaks had a really rough year. Just a really rough year. I mean, they had that win against Ferndale, which was huge early on in the year. Um... They haven't been the same team since that game. They really haven't. Um, and then you're taking on a Frazier team, you know, that's won three straight. Um, 
I mean, there are playoff, possibil playoff possibilities riding in this game for them. Um, the, I think the key is Mekhi Jenkins in this game. I really do. Um, you know, if the, if if Jenkins has the game they had last year against Frazier, um, I think that Frazier, I think Royal Oaks got a good chance to come out of Fra come out of Frazier and win that game. So I'm gonna take the. Um, you know, I was thinking about this game early on in the morning. I was thinking about it here. Um, I'm gonna take, but. My gut's tell me I'm going to take the Ravens in this game. I just think for some reason, Makai Jenkins is going to have a big game here like he did last year. Um, and I really think that, um, I just think that Royal Oak is going to um, find a way, and I think they're going to find a way to win this game. I really do. It'll be a huge win for Ray McMahon if he can get this one. Um, Troy Athens and Avondale. Um, this one's interesting. Because there's a lot of playoff invocations around this game. Um, I think with Athens getting that Week 8 win against Detroit Renaissance, they're starting to roll at the right time. Um, and then you look at Avondale coming off a really tough loss to Farmington. Um, I think that, um, I think that, um, Troy Athens right now, they're starting to roll again. Um, but I think this game's going to be close than the experts think. Um, I really think I'm. I really think with Athens, um, they're starting to figure things out a little bit. Um, I'm going to take the Red Hawks in this one. I think they're going to get in the playoffs um, and win this one. Avondale, I just don't know with them postseason wise right now. I know Snooze has them in the postseason right now, but um, but we'll see. I mean, like. I don't know if I've seen a team make the playoffs at three and six. I mean, like, but I just think with Avondale's case here, um, if they beat Troy Athens, they're in the playoffs. But I just don't think I see that happening. I just don't think I see that happening. Um, so I'm taking Athens in that game. Farmington against Ferndale. This one's interesting because Farmington's rolling right now. Ferndale. Just picked up a big win against Pontiac. So when I look at this game on paper, you know, I got to go Farmington. And I'm going to go Farmington because of they're playing their best football right now. And I think, you know, I think it's a big game for Jacob Sanders. I think it's a big game for Dominic Peschel. Um, For them to finish at 4-5 and five would be an incredible understatement for Farmington. I mean, the way they were at early in the year. I mean, some losses, losses to um, Troy Athens, Troy, um, Bloomfield Hills, and um, and um, North Farmington early in the year. All those four losses really hurt. Um, but for Farmington to finish strong, um, it's an incredible feat for them, obviously, uh, and to Berkeley as well. So for Farmington, you know, it's an incredible feat to finish strong, and I think they're going to finish strong this week. I really think they're going to beat Ferndale um, pretty convincingly um, and finish here at 4-5. and five. Um, Let's go now from the red to the – no, from the blue to the white. Oh, no, we talked the big one. We'll talk the big one in a minute here, Troy Bloompy Hills. That'll be my last one before I um, sign off. Um, let's go to the white now. You got um, you got um, Traverse City Central at North Farmington. Um you know, for me, if it was week one and look at this matchup, I'd go like, wow, this is a good matchup. Really great, great, exciting matchup here to watch. And, you know, North Farmington's lost five straight games. Um, Traverse City Central is coming down there really hot right now. They got a very good quarterback in Josh Burnham. Notre Dame commit. Um, you know, North Farmington obviously got Ryan Shelby, Jasper Beeler, Aaron Rice. Um, I'm just concerned about um, Ryan Shelby in this game. Um, I'm going against a really good defense in Traverse City Central. Um, I just think that the um, Trojans will be too much for the Raiders. Um, I know last time Traverse City Central went down into um, into this part of Mich part of the state, they lost a really tough one. Um, to Macomb, Macomb, Dakota. Um, I just think that um, 
I just think the Trojans this time around gets it done against the Raiders, and it's going to be, there's going to be some questions next year. I mean, program strength at North Farmington, not the strongest, obviously, but there are some question marks coming into next season for North Farmington. Um, if they were to win this game against Traverse City Central, this is big for the playoff points, obviously. Um, maybe it gets them in the postseason, but I just don't see them winning this game against Traverse City Central. I mean, not with the way that the Trojans are playing right now. Um, and then let's look at, um, you got Seaholm taking on Stony Creek. Um, it's going to, I think Stony Creek wins this game. I mean, like, but I just think it's going to be really interesting. Um, it's another veer team for Stony Creek. Um, but I just think the Cougars have enough in the tank to win this game. Um, Seaholm has been a really challenging year for them. Um, it's going to be, I think it'll be a close game. I really do think it'll be a really close game between Seaholm and Stony Creek. Um, but at the end of the day, I just think the Cougars, a little more firepower, um, a little more experience. Um, I just think Stony Creek wins that game. Um, Groves goes to Sterling Heights Stevenson to Runkle Field to take on the Titans. My goodness. I mean, what do you say? What do you say? It is a difficult matchup, to say the least, for Groves. It has been a rough year for them. They've had injuries. They've had to overcome a lot of things. Obviously, you look at Steve. Obviously, you look at Sterling Heights Stevenson, and you look at okay, they're coming off that loss to Romeo. They just blew out Utica Ford last week. They played in the MAC Red, one of the most difficult conferences in the state. Um. I just think that Romeo, that Romeo game has gotten so much in the skin of Sterling Heights Stevenson that it's, and they got some good players too over there at Stevenson. I think it's going to be a blowout at Runkle Field against Groves. I just think that, I just think that Stevenson's is too much for um, Coach Brenda Florida's team this year. I just think that um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens there in that game. Um, so I'm going with the Titans over the Falcons in that one. Um, Adams at Detroit Renaissance. I mean, who would have thought earlier in the year this would be the first meeting between these two teams? I mean, Adams looks really good. Detroit Renaissance has had some struggles. They lost last week 41-6 to Troy Athens. I don't know how in the world does this team match up with the Veer. And I think this is a big problem. When you match up with the Veer, it is really you got to know your assignments. You got to play assignment football, basically. So with with this one here, I think Adams wins convincingly. Yeah, over Renaissance um, gets ready for the postseason. They're going to be undefeated um, heading in the postseason, having multiple home playoff games. I mean, you know, so I just think it's going to be really difficult for them going forward. Um, but Adams. They're rolling at the right time. Um, let's go with um, and then let's go with um. I'll talk Ann Arbor here on Rochester in a minute. Um, they're my three top matchups, obviously. Um, let's go to the red matchups. Obviously, you got them. We talked Stony Creeks um, and um, see home earlier. Um, Oxford and Chippewa Valley. This is a big, big game. And for Oxford, I said this earlier. You win this game, you're in the playoffs. You lose this game, you're praying. Chippewa Valley's got athletes. I mean, they got a very good quarterback in Ryan Schuster. They got a really good quarter. They got a really good, they got a bunch of good playmakers, really talented playmakers. I am really concerned about Oxford's depth in this game. I am really concerned. Wildcat fans, you're going to have to do some praying. Um... You know, and um, hoping to get in the playoffs at four and five. I mean, I really like Chippewa Valley in this game. Um, I mean, you played Romeo earlier in the year. You lost that one. Um, I just think that, you know, Chippewa Valley, too much talent um, to overcome the Wildcats um, in this one. So if you're Oxford fans, you're praying this week. I mean, you know, hoping you can get in, take those last spots, you know, getting the bot getting around the 32, 31 mark. 
Um, so that is where I'm leaning toward. I'm leaning toward Chippewa Valley in that one. Um, West Bloomfield, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, it's been a miserable year for the Eagles. Um, really challenging year, especially about Preston Crum. Um, taking on a West Bloomfield defense that is just really on fire right now. Um, I got to take the Lakers at Swinehart. Um, it's going to be close because I think the Swinehart magic there, but I think it's going to be a West Bloomfield win, though. I really think the Lakers battle-tested. Um, going to be too much for the Eagles in that game, obviously. It'll be, it'll be too much for that one in that one. Um, let's look at, um, Clarkston Oak Park. Um, this is a tough matchup, obviously. Um, I think the Wolves will win this one pretty convincingly. I think too much Mike DePillo, too much Ethan Clark. Um, I just think that, um, it's going to be, the difference here, I think it's going to be is, um, Clarkson's offensive line up front, their defensive line. Um, they look good against Groves. Um, and that Groves team knocked off Oak Park. Um, so I just think it's going to be really difficult for Oak Park in this game with Groves. I know it's a 6 o'clock kickoff. Um, but I just think the Wolves had too much in that one. Um, Lake Orion and Celine. Um, this one's interesting. Celine comes in undefeated. Lake Orion comes in, you know, they picked up a good win against them, um, Seaholm. Um, Celine had a great win against Dexter last week, um, 42-40. That was a shootout. I know Celine's got two really good players. Um, they're very talented. Um, they're at home. But Lake Orion's playing with nothing to lose. I mean, people ask me about, okay, if the Dragons, if the Dragons were to win this game, this will help them play out point wise. Does it help them get in the playoffs? I don't know. That is the big, big question. I know it kills me in my heart here, but when I look at the matchup on paper, you know, it does nothing favors Lake Orion in that matchup. Nothing does. For them to win that game against Celine, they're gonna have to put everything they have in that game. Everything. And I don't know if it's still enough. You know. So we'll see what happens to that one. I mean it's a tough matchup to say the least. I know a lot of the experts are going to pick Celine in this one. Um, so. You know. And I've picked against Lake Orion. I know a couple times. I mean like once this year. Um, I just think it's going to be really challenging. So we'll see what happens to that one going forward there. Um, let's talk about the three matchups. Obviously, um, the three big ones. Um, we got um Rochester Ann Arbor Huron. We already talked one of the big matches already. Um Rochester Ann Arbor Huron is a really interesting game because Rochester right now looks at, you know, they're on the outside looking in right now, coming off that loss to um Oxford. Ann Arbor Huron is basically, Ann Arbor Huron is basically um, rolling right now. Their, their only loss was to Celine. I mean, so when you look at this matchup here, I mean, for Ann Arbor Huron, I think the travel could be a real important play here. Um, having to go up to Rochester, um, you know, I think that's going to pose to be a very difficult task. Um, for Rochester, for them to win this game, Alex Blano needs to play really well. Their defense needs to play really well as well. Um, and they really need the Soldiers of Fortune to step up in this game. If they can get that, I think Rochester can win this game. I really think Rochester will win this game. Thanks, Alex Blano. Um, this is a big test for Ann Arbor Huron. Obviously playing against Celine, playing Temperance Bedford, playing Monroe, um, playing... Um, Playing those type of teams will test Ann Arbor here. I don't think they're going to be phased going up to Rochester. But I just think this is, the, if if Rochester wants to make a stand, they have to win this game. If they win this game, they're in the playoffs. If they lose this game, they are out. That It's a make or break game for Rochester and Coach Eric Vernon and his team. If they can win this game, they will be a postseason team. If not... 
then it's gonna be um it's gonna be a very interesting off season for Rochester. But I think they will win this game. I really do. Um and then we'll talk the big one, obviously. This is the um in the blue on the decide the blue title. Troy heading to Bloomfield Hills. This one's a big one. Um, obviously, both these teams are undefeated. Troy came off a of survival. Last two weeks, Troy's really had to play survival ball. They've won their last two games by a combined four points. Olympia Hills has been rolling people. So when you look at this game here, Troy in the last two weeks has been battle-tested. Olympia Hills has been beating everybody. Whoever wins this game is likely going to the white next year. So when you really look at this team on paper, these two teams on paper, yes, they're similar based on record, but the difference in this game, I really believe, and I know Troy's had Bloomfield Hills' number. Last season in the playoffs, Troy went into Bloomfield Hills and stunned the Blackhawks 29-14. to That really changed Troy's perspective. That really changed Troy's fortunes, that game, at Bloomfield Hills last year. Now you're returning back there. It's a bigger game. Two teams undefeated. You got two teams that are rolling, likely the playoffs. Now, when I look at Bloomfield Hills, this is a team that I don't think has really been tested since the Berkeley game. And I think... In, that's something that is a concern when I look at Dan Loria's team. Troy, on the other hand, has been playoff tested. Last two weeks, combined four points on the road. I look at Troy. Troy, to me, passes the eyeball test. Bloopia Hills, on the other hand, does not. Until with Bloopia Hills, I'm looking at this game... I know deep down that I really want Bloopy Hills to win this game. But I just think at the end of the day, no, actually I want Troy to win this game. But at the end of the day, I just think Bloopy Hills has enough playmakers. Um, I think they have enough playmakers to really make some noise in this one. This is going to be a really close game. This is going to be a tight game. But at the end of the day, you know, people are asking me, who am I going to go with? Who am I going to go with? I mean, who do I want to see up in the white next year? Who do I? I really... Don't be surprised if Bloomfield Hills wins this game. But I'm going to go with Troy. Because until the eyeball test is there, I, I just think the Colts have really passed the eyeball test. Um, it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. But I really like Troy in this game because of the play of Darius Whiteside. I really like the play of both Block Brothers. Um, I know Bloomfield Hills has got a really good quarterback and I'm CJ Jackson. Um, Shane Winters had a really nice year. Andrew Sapersky's had a really nice year. Derek Leeson a nice year. Um, but I just think that the eyeball test is the one that I'm looking at, obviously. And so far to me, Troy has passed it right now. For Bloomfield Hills, if they want to make a statement, you have to win this game against Troy. You know, and then, of course, likely for them, most likely a postseason match for Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But at the end of the day, I really like, um, I do like the Colts to win this game because of the experience. Um, but it's going to be a great, great atmosphere down there in Bloomfield Hills. Um, I know PK Sports is going to have that game for sure. I know, I think the Biff 88 1 will have that one as well. Um, so we'll see what happens in that one. It's a big, big game down there on um, Andover Road. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting game between Troy and um, Bloomfield Hills um, for the blue title. Um, so my final thoughts of the week, um, keep getting better. Um, stay strong, everybody. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, all right, now everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, keep an eye on, on the blog at semi-semicolon-to-me-at-blogspot.com for... Um, the latest surrounding um, volleyball previews, surrounding soccer districts, and um, everything going around the OAA. Um, all right, now hopefully, uh, I mean, hopefully you'll see what happens going forward. This is Sammy to me here. I'm gonna sign off here. Take care. God bless. And see you on next week, everybody. See you later.